What's up, guys? We are in hell yet again to talk about demons with no one other than Eli Rallo. Hi. What a name, though. <laughs> Thank what you. What an iconic, iconic name. It, it is a little iconic. Is Eli short for something? No. My parents, like, they thought I was going to be a boy. I was their first kid. They didn't get the gender, which I find to be so scary. Like, who does that? <laughs> and, and so they picked out one name. And then I was born and they were like, shit, like, we should pick a girl named with three letters. And they couldn't, they couldn't decide on one. <laughs> So they were just like, Eli, it is. And I'm like, that's so... My twin brothers are named Jack and Jake. Like, my parents are fucking awful at picking names. They gave up before they started. Oh, they were like, we're done. <laughs> Wait, so do people call you Ellie a lot? All the time, yeah. yeah. And I usually answer to it, honestly, because yeah. it's just like, it's easier. But then I feel like a therapist told me once, she was like, you need to stop letting people <laughs> consistently call you something that is not your name because you feel You're bad. You're disassociating? Yeah, she was like, what do you, what do you mean you feel bad correcting someone about your name and I'm like I don't know I feel bad so I fully have Michael Rappaport on this pod all the time and he's like my religion I'm obsessed with him and the fact he even wants to record with me is amazing and he calls me Hannah and he just calls me Hannah you're like let it happen and I I've never <laughs> once he was like is it Hannah or Hannah I was like Hannah and then he was like hey Hannah and I was like call me hit me with a truck and I would yeah, say thank literally you run me the fuck over and I'm like thank so much names are socially constructed who gives yeah, a who shit gives a fuck? <laughs> but um Eli is fucking cool I thank do have to you. say it's cool you work it thank you I discovered you on TikTok and you're immediately a vibe like you're very yourself and I feel like you're very smart and witty, which I obviously <laughs> was like, okay, I this girl like has funny shit to say. But your name on TikTok's The Jar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm late to the game. What does The Jar mean and what does it have to do with you? Yeah, so literally back in the early days of TikTok, which I feel like most of like the TikTok native creators, which is what they call us when we blew up there first. Uh -huh. I think a lot of us went viral for like doing random shit. <laughs> and then back then it was a lot easier to just be like, now we're going to move and do this instead. And people yeah. would just be like, okay, which is like not a thing nowadays with like, because back then up. people were like, give us anything. We yeah. They care. were like, we don't care. There's not a lot of you. The dark historic yeah, like times. 2020. <laughs> I was like fucking around with my brothers in my house and like we made Made this like jar and then it went like oddly viral i meant to post it on friends only to show my friends like we're making a high snack like we're putting candy and like whatever and i put it on public it got like mm, five hundred thousand views like the next morning so a lot of people were like but what is this so then i was like i'm an actress like i'm just gonna have fun with this so i made this like really crazy <laughs> over the top video explaining it with like photos and music and people so were like, you leaned into the role oh so hard that video two million views so people hadn't even seen the other one it was like that was the video so explain to me what how big was the jar like i haven't even seen it. okay yeah so it's like <laughs> um, well, obviously, like nobody can see this if they're listening, but it's like a gallon size. Like, imagine a gallon, huge gallon jar. Yes. Then imagine like you go to Target and you get every snack that you like and you put it all in. So it's mm -hmm. like Cheetos, pretzels, popcorn, like any candy, chocolate M&Ms, nuts, whatever. And then you mix it up and then it's kind of like trail mix, glorified. Well, this mix. I just realized like we've been we're playing checkers, you're playing chess. We've been eating the same type of trail mix yeah. forever. Yeah. And the fact that you're like popcorn, I'm like, oh my God, why not? And yeah. like all, Swedish fish or whatever yeah. the fuck. Like, no, why yeah. is trail mix so basic? It's so fucking boring. And then people were always <laughs> like, this is like Yassified trail mix. This is like next level trail mix. And yeah. people just thought it was so fun. And then we- And it's like, aesthetically pleasing probably to see it yeah, get fill, filled up. It is. And it's just like silly. And then we like- really it was like dark covid so we were doing crazy shit with it we put like all our thanksgiving leftovers in there one time <laughs> and like mixed it up people were like this is nasty like mm -hmm. it was like shock value things and then i moved to new york to go to grad school and i was like hey guys no more jar it's so fucking expensive i'm broke i'm you going also to grad just school. had a steady diarrhea throughout yeah we were, we were all <laughs> ill and I'm, like trying to eat it all before being your made cholesterol the levels one. are just spiking yeah, doctors were like what's going on <laughs> um and so i was like i'm not gonna do it as much anymore but like stick around if you want and a lot of people. So you had like a formal announcement. You were like, I can't be Jar Girl forever. Yeah, no, I, it was so dramatic, but I didn't know what else to do because I was like moving to New York it, like with like five roommates to go to grad school. So I made this video being like, hey, everyone, like I know you guys came for this, but like I'm also here and I'm going to like just share my life in New York and like other things. Like I like other stuff. Yeah. And I had been like peppering it in. Like I like astrology. I'm like, <laughs> I like to like say funny shit and put it online. Like I studied theater, whatever. 
And they were all like, okay, cool. Sounds good. And I, like, I was so lucky for that. I, like nobody was- Because really I feel upset. like you can get people to follow you because the concept is unique, but people stay because they like your energy. I always yeah. like to say, people don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. So if you're still oh, bringing so the, ta- the same vibe, it's like you see you on just different yeah. journeys. And there's like eras because I feel like you weren't doing a lot of like the street interviewing. No. But now probably so many people know you because of that. And it's yes. like there was so many fucking eras before that that other people found you from. Yes, that's such a great point. And I also, it's important that when you do something like to be down with change. Like I told you I was a tweeter and people were yeah. like, why is your all your tweets on your same profile like create a meme page and I'm like because one day I'm gonna wake up and I'm not gonna want tweet anymore yeah I know like that's called evolving and growing and I love to kind of see how things change and I think because of the pandemic which is like obviously a huge change in life is when opportunities come yeah so like it's fun to do something but like I have ADD I get bored really easily so do I. and like the man the street interviews who knows what's gonna be next but I'm not gonna be doing those forever yeah so I think it's very cool that you had the like self-awareness to like you know scar girl yes <laughs> oh wait no I was listening to you explain scar girl. I know I need someone who knows On, the scar girl thing. I don't even think you understand how fucking involved I am with okay, this. Okay, thank you. Cause Paige was like, what are you talking Paige about? Paige was like, I don't know what it is. And you're like, no, no, no. And when you were doing that, I was like, thank God. But what really gets me is like, if she is lying, like she is getting a bag. Like she's getting so much attention at the mm-hmm. very least. Like mm-hmm. if this woman's in the creator fund, it's blowing <laughs> up. So if people don't know this girl like had a scar and she's so cute. She's just like a college girl. Yeah. And then one day the scar is like slightly fading. And one day it comes out just like brown, like and fully dark brown and slightly different. It's like a different angle. Like, in one. It's like a straight line. And then the other one, it's like a U shape. Yes. And but the people that are on Photoshop, there are people like <laughs> buying monthly photoshop packages so that they can like cross like reference her old scar and her new one and like the shape i'm like <laughs> where do you get the time like but also where do we have the time to spend four hours <laughs> looking at <laughs> watching <laughs> my my most recent search hashtags like hashtag scar girl hashtag scar girl reveal and i'll be honest i like don't trust people on the internet like the people coming for people like whenever people come for people I always am like I'm gonna like they're coming for her and it's fucked up so I try to defend her but then her videos defending herself are like a little too defensive for me yeah she has like 400 excuses she's like and and then it kind of burnt and then she's like the self tanner (laughs) the self tanner -tanner goes away (laughs) like there's no way if it was self tanner every bitch out here with a little scar would have a brown dot yeah would have a brown like (laughs) so I'm like rooting for her but like low key I'm like I don't believe you but I want to believe you or just like do it a little better like she puts the q-tip in like the Meissler water and doesn't touch her face (laughs) and it's so obvious I'm like Honey. But uh, but also, like, people are like, if this is a con, this is just, like, an amazing con. But she is an example of someone who, like, kind of feels like her only worth is within the scar. Yeah. But it takes confidence for you to be like, I've actually... But I guess it sounds like you have a lot of different avenues of things you're interested in. You're obviously going to grad school, which is fucking smart. Yeah. And you, and you went to Michigan and studied all this shit, yeah. which is smart. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not like you were 17 and you f- no, did a couple yeah. dance moves and you were like, I don't want to like learn Do anything this. else yeah. which is valid too I don't judge that either yeah yeah no it definitely is like an interesting thing but I was like I'm just gonna capitalize on this moment like I've always liked to like create things yes yeah, same like, studied theater I've always been a writer and I always wanted to just like I wanted to do exactly what I, I'm doing now, but I had no idea how to like communicate that. Yes. And I also didn't want to be an influencer. Like I just wanted to like talk to people like on the internet and in person and shit. Yeah, like I feel like I'm kind of similar to you where like people will call you an influencer. Like yeah. I even looked at threads and like your name is thrown around. I'm yeah. just talking like people talk about inner, um, New York City people. Yeah. And then I look at you and I'm like, but she's just trying to create fun content. But I guess because you have like a fashion about you and you're young and you're like yeah. in the scene. And you like know that if you, they immediately will be like, oh, she's an influencer if you know other influencers. Because you hang with some other influencers. Yeah, and like you you go and like post one photo with an influencer once and they're like, influencer. Oh yeah, you're like, this makeup was cool. And then they're like, influencer. Yeah, you get one <laughs> PR box and they're like, oh, she's an influencer. And well, it's funny because I feel like <laughs> the people, like no matter what I do, they like will not consider me an influencer. <laughs> no, like, she's not an like, influencer. People make fun of me. Like I do an Amazon storefront and they think it's ironic. And I'm like, no, like I no, like want to. like a fucking real. <laughs> they think it's 
it's a joke, like it's a bit, and I'm like, okay, let's do it. Like, this in. is so funny for your content. Like, <laughs> this is the best bit I've ever Paige seen. Paige just shits on my Amazon storefront, and I'll be like, sleep up. Um, <laughs> Paige is an influencer. Like, Paige I would actually on. consider her an influencer. I'm literally like the Walmart page, which is <laughs> just what I've leaned into. But what's funny is there is, are you familiar with that cupcake jar company? Yes. Like, cause she started, it wasn't during the pandemic. It was like way before, but she sells these jars, yes, with like cakes and shit. Danny, cake. jars by Danny. Jars by jars Did by Did any Danny. part of you think, do I sell these crazy jars? Yes. Like for a really long time. And people were like, do it, do it, do it. But like, how does one, I'm so like. <laughs> the admin? The, recently I was talking to my family because they're like, you need to start a business. Like that's your next step, which probably not. Mm -hmm. But in my brain, I was like, what would, like, we were coming up with ideas, like, just for fun. And I'm like, if I want to start a company, what, how do you fucking do that? Like, do you just look up, like, like I would, you know what I would do? Distributor. <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy with that. Like, I tried to start, like, a fruit veggie roll up company. I've started ever, I did a tie dye company way before it was cool to do tie dye. <laughs> all failed, all failed. But I would do a subscription thing with you where each month they get a jar oh, see, that's of different really kind yeah 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 and like it's not that expensive and then yeah. you just know each month you got to ship these out and it's like a and consistent, it's, like done, it's not yeah. like a random like yeah that's what i would do for you we can talk about it after you're, <laughs> you you're like on. robin these are the pr moves <laughs> for the jar. oh my god i'm literally robin you're turning into <laughs> yeah she came on my pod robin. and she was like we're doing this all wrong but but also if you're not into that like physically selling shit is so not that it's waste but it's so much crap it's so much shit and then you have to fit like podcasts we're, we don't have any like yeah i have to pay for the studio but i don't really have overhead no. with that you're like spending out of your pocket no, sometimes i listen to like how i built this podcast oh i like, love CEOs, listening to and i'm but I'm it doesn't like, make fully sense it yeah, doesn't make no, sense it never makes sense they're always like <laughs> and then one day like i was just fortune 500 and i'm like no you weren't she goes no. like i put up my squarespace website and we sold a hundred grand in two Two days and you're just like you're missing wow. something there's something like in what, the like middle. how many makeup companies are there why did kosas blew up at yeah. versus like all the other all ones? The other ones I'm fascinated like, by that shit yeah oh did you just see that um i don't know if you saw this but i just watched a video on my way here that tart fired their entire marketing team <gasps> they got back the entire thing all of them listed director of brand marketing director of pr events like every single person got fired Wait, because I thought that Tarte was killing it because it's Same. all people talked about. I, I thought it was... So whoever's in charge does not believe that all press is good press. So apparently, I guess, this creator was saying that they did not see a change in sales due to the trip. I don't know how they would know that. <laughs> like, what so the, like, where the fuck did they get that information? But like, I kind of believe her. She seemed kind of like, she seemed like an authority figure. And then she pulls up the LinkedIn and it's the whole entire marketing team. And it was po posted on LinkedIn as like looking for new people the minute they landed. Like they land in the States. Like, here we go. Oh my God. Holy shit. Okay. So then some of people were saying it wasn't actually in Dubai. It had to there have been. Was, there was a rumor. Wait, sorry, it was, that's a crazy it was just rumor. like one of those private jets in LA where it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just like it's like a nice. They went from like Santa Monica to like two, yeah. two hours away. They're like, this is a desert. Get out. Like, <laughs> yeah. They like them. they found a camel. Um, I just think that there's a difference between brand awareness and sales, though. Yeah. Like, this was huge for brand awareness. Oh, you yeah. have to factor that in. I was cracking up at the people being like. I am disturbed by this. I'm like, do you know that you're doing exactly what they want you to do? If you're so disturbed, turn off your phone. Like they they want you to say that shit. Uh -huh. You're literally being like, Tarte Cosmetics is disturbing. I'm like- Their website stupid. is linked below. Yeah, they're like, if you want to go look at the website and never buy something from them again, click the link in my bio. Well, their <laughs> thing was they brought all these people on this trip and they did not force them to post, which like, I know- other places have done that, but they had like a like Rare Beauty had like a specific thing they were promoting yeah. that like you don't have to post about, but you kind of felt like mm, I might as well see if I like it or not. Yeah. Where theirs was just like a general like Tarte collabing cool with Sephora. Yeah. So that's a brand awareness trip. You're not yeah. doing a discount code. Like yeah. you can't expect sales. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I think like it's the same thing that I always say with like TikTok ads. Like I feel like in general, you're not going to see a skyrocket in sales because an influencer did an ad with you. It's like over time. Like, yeah. People will start associating 
associating that brand with us and when they need something in that like genre exactly like to it. like a, a tv commercial for insurance you're not gonna be like oh i need to buy I insurance need now but when yeah. eventually you want insurance you're like you no know, geico has a pretty they get a little exactly. laugh out of me yeah yeah i think it's like kind of that but i guess it's not going well for them wait that's it's like crazy. the tea i just saw on tiktok i was like oh my god i've also never seen a, a brand trip get that kind of press at all I feel like it's going to change brand trips forever. I feel like now people are tuned in. They have to be iconic. They have to be iconic I'm or sc- otherwise it's... Brand trips are my nightmare. My worst nightmare. Like, I would love to get invited somewhere cool, but I need a lot of alone time. And also, I cannot be glam. Like, <laughs> I don't... I guess, like, there's no requirement to look good, but I don't like, like, actively making myself look good all the time. No, the when the girls are just, like, running around the bikinis, like, perfect tan, like, I would be bloated on the sides, sunburnt. Like, like having some stomach digestive <laughs> issues for sure. I and also pale. like I don't even like depression. I would like ruin everyone's photo. I just it's it's definitely like a skill set. Oh yeah. Also, I've like taken photos for influencers before. Like other influencers <laughs> have been like, "Hey, can you take a photo of me?" And like their feedback has been like, "You are fucking horrible at taking photos." Look, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's a thin line between like, is it me? <laughs> yeah, like, or is it you or is it the from, lighting yeah who knows the call's coming, from the house, <laughs> the like, coming from the house. I'm trying to get better but like I just I've know some photo feedback. days I, it could be fucking the most famous photographer in the world I'm gonna look like shit yeah, look I'm horrible. having a bad face day and yeah. I own it yeah oh my god but I do think the brand trips they're problematic in itself where like all the girls are white or like yeah. all of them are skinny all of them look the fucking yeah. same where like let's have some like r- regular interesting people on these trips why does everyone have to look like a model i think it would be really cute if they had like <laughs> influencers bring plus ones that are their followers like you have to hand select a follower that also could be, be insane though it could be oh it could that, go could, so nuts, that could go really bad but for the content <laughs> yeah. for my entertainment i'm personally won't be there but i'll be watching can you imagine? It could be reality television. I was about to say, this is giving me reality TV PTSD because like yeah. they locked us in a house one season and it was oh. the worst experience of my life. It was for COVID because we used to just film weekends and drive back and like it was, you can't get alone time. And, like if you're sharing a room with someone, you, oh, you have to go- pretend you're shitting for like an hour Hours. just to like get Hours. back to normalcy. Yeah, to get normalcy. back to like reality. Speaking of, How's your mental health? How's depression, anxiety? Are we a cocktail of both? Are I think we- we're, we've been a cocktail, but I'm pretty like good with the depression these days. My anxiety has always been bad since I was like really little. Mm. I feel like it comes in waves. And I also feel like randomly, I like, I feel like in the last year, like my prefrontal cortex like developed fully. Like, <laughs> well, how old are you? I'm 24. You're not there yet. You have two more years. <laughs> okay, but I feel like it's like developing in a way that like all of a sudden I like my brain feels like opened more, and I feel like it's making the anxiety worse. So I'm like, I'm thinking. You're too like, self aware. <laughs> yeah, I'm too self aware. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, why do I think? Like, <laughs> I miss the like. What was I doing in college? Like, I had no thoughts. Like, and now all of a sudden, there's like thoughts on thoughts. How did your anxiety like? manifest when you were a kid panic attacks when I was really like little little like I started like therapy and whatnot when I was like eight I remember like my mom always says I just like hated going to school because I like had all these fears that she like wouldn't come pick me up and like Mm -hmm. it was like anxious attachment like that and then panic attacks and then those really went away like probably through high school and then I was like fine and then I went to (laughs) college and I went to college and I was not fine and that's like when it got like bad and then it got better and then I feel like now it's just like I have a pretty good ways of managing it but it's still like you know every day is a new day like you never know I feel like I'm not trying to make your head big but I feel like you're very smart which is like literally why you're mentally ill Oh, all the, all the smart girlies are like the most mentally ill. Because your brain is working so fast that you can run circles around a moment to find the worst situation. Yes. I also therapy myself. So I'll be like talking to my therapist and I'll be like, well, I actually know the reason that this is happening. And she's like, this is like not how you do this. But then she's also like, but you're also like low key, right? <laughs> like she has trouble. We have trouble like getting anywhere because I'll be like, but I've already decided why. And she's like, okay, like maybe... <laughs> She's like, you need me, but like, whatever you're doing right now is making this worse. And what what the cool thing is, you're now, what stage are you in this book? Because I've been hearing a lot about this book. Yes. So basically, Harper Collins is on a strike right now, which is just like a, a obviously very large piece of it. So it's like, <laughs> wait, I know. 
We're on a huge strike and it's really sad and like okay. support the union. We support the union. Mm-hmm. But my editor's on strike. And so there was like some changing of the guards in terms of leadership for my book because contractually it should be like in copy edits now but because of the delay which is like so understandable it's not so it was due in December which was like my final copy and then I was supposed to get one more round of edits but that was super delayed so the one more round of edits is coming February 28th and then it's due back to them on April 1st and then I will not be able to touch it again (gasps) And then it'll go into like copy editing, which is like little like grammar and like fact checking. Yeah. And then we'll do pre-order and like the cover and that'll be in May or June. Did you want to be an author? Yeah, my whole life. Oh. So that's very cool. Yeah. Wait, that's amazing. Also, when you get edits, are you good at receiving the edits? Because this is like you pouring your heart and soul into a book. Yes. It's also just like so tough because this book is like so personal to me, yeah. which is awesome. And I love that. But it's like... I'm I've always been the kind of person where like if I'm being praised over something I'm wondering like well where's my challenge like where's my criticism Mm. and when I was in college like I was in creative writing as a minor and I felt like I was like the star of the class in a lot of my classes and then I got to my senior year and I had this professor and he never once complimented my writing and nothing ever made me a better writer like I was fucking working so hard to get him to compliment my writing because I was like everybody else thinks I'm the best like what the fuck (laughs) and I would literally I remember posting on my snapchat being like Doug will not tell me I'm a good writer (laughs) and I, I worked my ass off though to finally get him to be like the growth that you have like exhibited in this class is like amazing and it like made my writing so much better anything for Doug yes seriously like I ride for Doug um so these days I feel like when I get the like criticism and edits and whatnot I'm pretty good with them because I realize like it's actually gonna improve and these people like know what they're doing no that's a really good perspective because when it, I understand like with math they're like we have some edits this is a mistake yeah. but it's with mistake. creativity it could be so subjective yeah and like I know definitely like with comedy people can have so many different Yes. perspectives and then you have your own voice that they might not understand yeah. so it gets it can get like muddy i hate when people criticize comedy because i'm like we all find different things funny but also like that person is just like telling you stories about themselves so, like do you not like them like what yeah. the fuck is wrong with you like oh yeah i had someone comment they were like all hannah talks about is being from brooklyn and playing tennis and i'm like okay that's just me this is my life so like, <laughs> is- i don't think you don't like that i talk about too much i think you You're just don't me. like yeah. me as a person <laughs> And then, like, for a year, I was like, don't talk about tennis on the podcast you because like, people are annoyed. Then I was like, but it's literally my only reference point for literally anything. No, I like when you talk about it, too. And I feel like it shows you're well-rounded. You have, like, different <laughs> literal eras of your life. Not to say it's internalized misogyny, but, like, oh, I feel like is. if a dude was constantly like, yeah, when I played basketball, people would be like, yeah, yeah, jerk yeah, it that's off. That's so cool. That's so cool. Tell me more about basketball. Retell me that story told a hundred times about when you dunked it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> not so, for us. but it's all about like love your relationship with yourself, your relationship with other people. At what point were you like, I have something to say? Because I feel like with comedy, I've shit to say. But when I've been like thinking about book writing and I constantly am like, oh, I haven't found the meaning yet. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. No. So it's it's kind of like a funny story. I always like knew I wanted to write, but I was like, I'm going to write fiction. But in college, my best writing like the writing that won awards was like narrative nonfiction, which is personal obsessed. And so I always knew like, okay, this is definitely like my strongest suit. I just love fiction. And so after I graduated, I got my master's at Columbia in journalism because I was like, I should be like realistic with my life and be a journalist. And then TikTok happened and Instagram. And I was like, I want to figure out like you're like I'm gonna be a war journalist. And then you're like jars. Yeah, no. I'm like, oh my god, snags. <laughs> like, Columbia was like d- they dead ass like delete your social media if you want to be a serious journalist. I was like, okay, like should I like just withdraw? But I got my degree. But that's fucking crazy that like I actually I was like communications because yeah. I couldn't do journalism because I was on a ton of steam and it was like too much of a commitment. I was <laughs> grinding. <about to>. <laughs> just grinding. They were like you're too dumb to do journalism school. But Larry Jones did the journalism school. When I was in it, Instagram wasn't even a thing yet. Oh 2013. And I was, I started in t- t- 2009. Yes. So think about like how journalism, we were learning about newspapers and radio. Podcasts oh were not God. popular. Yeah, we did. We had a podcast class. That's like we didn't have media. that. And the fact that they yeah. even told you to delete your social media, like every journalist yeah. has their social, social media, media up on everything. Yeah. And so it was like, we were doing that. And then. I was like, okay, I don't really want to be a full-time TikToker for so long. Like, I don't want it to be a main source of income. I want to be a writer. I've always wanted to be a writer. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to figure it out. I'm either going to get, like, a column in a magazine or something. And then in tandem, I, like, started writing a blog where I was just, like, 
posting my writing and yes. I was also doing Instagram boxes and they were supposed to be like ask me anything and I thought people would be like what jeans are you wearing yeah and like what kind of conditioner do you use but they were like what do I do if the guy that I'm dating um if I like bled all over his bed and like <laughs> threw up and then fucked his roommate like and I was like oh like nobody gives a fuck about what clothes I'm wearing at all like, and so I started You're a different kind of influence no, yeah I started giving advice only because like that is the only thing people were putting in the question boxes and I think people just saw me as someone that's like unbiased and yeah. they relate to and it's like calling up a friend and being how do I deal with this situation but the friend only knows what you're telling them yeah and so it's like an interesting third party and so my agents actually saw that and my writing on the blog and a bunch of my writing from college and they emailed me and they were like we're these agents and like if you want to write fiction we can connect you and you can write fiction but like we do not nonfiction. We think you should write this book. And so I, I took a meeting with them, signed with them, and they were like, and we think this should be the book. And so they kind of told me. <gasps> wow. And then we shaped it together. So they like gave me the idea. They were like something with your rules lists and like this question box thing that you do and like all this stuff. And like we were putting it together and they were like, oh, yeah. And then that was that. Wow. I mean, it is. It's cool that you're coming from like Ivy League, like your own voice and your own writing experience to be able to take someone else saying this is a, an idea we have for you and for you to like collaborate yeah. with them because I could see a lot of people like their egos being like I'll think of a better yeah. idea kind of thing no I was like this I remember like when I got the email from my one agent and she like wrote all the other people that like they like have Taylor Jenkins Reid signed and Nicholas Sparks and like all of these writers that I like look up to actively could never even see myself being on the same client page on their website. Like yeah. I was hysterical. I was like, this is literally my dream come true. Like, and I, I always say like, I was always on the path. I just didn't know how many like forks in the road and like different directions I was going to go. And I really let life take me. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I did because I, there's no one way to get anywhere. Yeah. And also, if you had stuck with jars, this wouldn't have happened. Exactly. Like the jar. But we love her. She's like, the, we know the we, beginning. We literally the love her. <laughs> I, that's like what I say about like reality TV. Like I did reality TV yeah, for a stand. And I love her. But like she was a, she got me like out of my nine to five. Yeah. But she wasn't the entertainment that I felt like I could be. And like sometimes happiest you thing. need that stepping stone. And then people are like, oh, damn, Hannah's really fucking funny and creative. Like, we don't even need to watch her on TV. We can watch her on TikTok and, like, her do her Dude, thing. Dude, TikTok literally, like, brought me back to life because I was yeah. like, oh, I could be myself here. And yeah. people didn't even and know people, like, anything else. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I actually, I'm trying to think of when I first saw you. I was seeing your videos, but then my best friend was like, um, you have to, I'm like a big girl's got to eat. Oh, I love Girls Gotta and Eat. And so I I like fangirled over them so hard. Like, and they're so nice to me, but they're probably like, who the fuck? <laughs> they're like, shut the fuck up. And so my best friend was like on Giggly Squad. They were talking about Hannah's Bachelorette and Raina and Ashley were there. You have to listen to it. And that's when I put it all together about you. I was like, oh, I've seen this girl on TikTok. I had seen your wedding content, but then I put it all together. I had no idea about the reality TV. Like literally nothing. It's funny because with you, I feel like I you had been writing something or I saw that you were a writer and I thought that was cool and I like didn't put together that you were the girl I also thought was funny on TikTok. Yeah, it was like, it, it always happens. <laughs> we're just like multi-dimensional like so, We're so talented. <laughs> but I do think when you have a sense of humor, people inherently like have to trust you to yeah. like trust that the, you, they know where you're going with the joke. So yeah. I feel like with the trust you've gained of not just being like, oh, I recommend this sweater. You're like funny and insightful. Because at first I'm like, She's so young. What could she be talking about with like love and relationships? Yeah. But it's more like your unique perspective on it yeah. all. Yeah. And I, I do think that the best part is like people are like, what gives you the agency and blah, 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 blah. And like, yeah. what ground do you have to stand on? I'm like, none. That's, like, <laughs> that's the cool thing though. Yeah. It's like I am going to be 25 when the book comes out. I am. You're like, Just I am a counting. quarter Yeah, like country. I'm so young. But like the point of the book is to give people the thing that I wish I had when I was 20 and 19 and 21 mm -hmm. and even now mm -hmm. like it's called I didn't know I needed this because a lot of my followers say that to me and that was the title my agent came up with is genius oh, we like combed through all my comments for like a day to find like what like to extrapolate the most like yeah like poignant ones yeah the meaning of all the content so that's why it's called that but I really feel like a lot throughout the book a lot I say I didn't know how much I needed to hear what I know now mm -hmm. and it's just like something like I don't know I write about like queefing and like gross shit Same. that I just like wish like I didn't even touch a vibrator till I was 21 because nobody talked about it no nobody was talking about like it's not embarrassing to bleed on his but it's this isn't that that you know there was no like 
conversations happening and now there are so many more but I just want to make there be more because I would have been so much happier had I had like yeah even like a call her daddy back in the day like when I was a freshman in college and could listen to girls talk about sex yes because like we weren't doing that no and I also think if you were like 35 it would be harder for you to write things that like a 19 year old would fully yeah. comprehend where you're like close enough to it that you're like yeah bitch I just went through this yeah. and I can like kind of hold your hand and a little. I also think that there's like the Glennon Doyle of it all where she's like so wise and I don't claim to be wise but I yeah. think that there's a spot for both of us like there's a spot for wisdom and people that have like really lived through things and there's a spot for somebody who's 24 or 25 to be like this is the shit that I wish we were talking about more like and you don't even have to agree with me but let's all just talk about it together yeah I feel like that's kind of what it is and also you're like a fucking legit writer like you're not like hey I'm kind of good with captions <laughs> <laughs> and if I put it all together, I think I could fuck up a book. I think I could fuck up a book. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. People were like, was it hard to write it? And I'm like, no. Like, it's a thing that comes most naturally to me in the entire world. Like, it was definitely not every day was easy. There was, like, periods of writer's block. And it was also, like, some of the chapters were really difficult emotionally to write and get through. Yeah. But it was never once, like, this is a labor. Like, I'm, this is so How long hard. did it take? So I got to choose six or nine months. I chose six. So yeah. I did it in six. So I did it from May until like October. I'm fascinated by this because it's something I've never done. What is your like process? My process? Yeah. yeah. So or, like I, what did your day look like? Yeah, I can't write at home. I feel like I always compare it to like, you know, when like babies like or like toddlers that have diapers like can't shit in front of other people. They like go hide. <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't know this. You didn't know this? <laughs> babies like and toddlers like they'll yeah. get like embarrassed. Like yeah. once they like reach the age of like knowing that. Yeah. And they'll go like walking around and like. Hiding. Oh, yeah. That is me with writing. If I'm at home and people know that I'm like in my process, I you, will like, literally be like, I'm sober. Oh, yeah. Because you, you're you thinking how they're thinking that you're thinking. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, I can't do this. And like, they're wondering. They probably don't give a fuck. I'm like, everybody in this home is wondering what is going they, like, on. They think in I'm here. trying to be Carrie Bradshaw right now. Yeah, I'm like, everyone shut up. And so I've never been able to do it, like, not even in high school. So mm -hmm. I like also my ADD likes noise and I like a lot of stuff going on at once, which I know a lot of people mm -hmm. are like, nope, that does not That's focus. fascinating. But it helps me to focus if I have like music or I'm at a coffee shop. I had an office for a little while while I was writing the book. Oh. Just like, so I had a place to go and write. So I did that. And then my process is always music like no matter what I always have music on and then if I what ever, kind of music I like like chill vibes so it depends on the day like I have tons of playlists I love are there lyrics in it yes oh. so I'll listen to like Sarah Bareilles Nora Jones I'll listen to Miss mm -hmm. Swift sometimes mm -hmm. like depending on the day and then I always have like lots of beverages around me candles I like like ambiance obviously people like I said I like it to be like kind of noisy yeah and then if I ever get writer's block I read because I think it just is like the best way to inspire yourself. So if yeah. I'm like writing something and I, I know what I want to say or can't get it out or I'm like stuck at a point in an essay specifically since I just did essays, I'll like read an essay that somebody else wrote or I'll yeah. read like my favorite author. And it reminds you like, oh, it's possible to like put a thought together. Yes. Like, <laughs> or like, okay, that just like jump started my creativity now. Like I'm feeling creative or I'll listen to like a really well constructed song that I love and I'll be like, mm. okay, they wrote that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can write this. Mm -hmm. But I don't have like I know there are writers who like I wake up at 5 a.m. and write and there are writers that like like to get high and write at night. Mm -hmm. I definitely think I have good ideas during that time, but I'm like a daytime kind of gal. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love that so much. It's really like it, I feel like you had been manifesting it for a while. So you finally yeah. were able to like put it all together. I mean, you really are like an athlete where like you've trained your whole life for this moment. Yeah, it's crazy. I really like my whole life. Like sometimes it's still really like crazy to me. And I feel like I never understood imposter syndrome until now. Cause <gasps> I'd always be like imposter syndrome. Like when I went to Columbia, I was like, I feel imposter syndrome because I feel like people are better than me. But I didn't realize that what imposter syndrome really feels like, at least to me, is like not even believing that it's happening. Like I, when it first started Ooh. happening and I was first writing the book, I couldn't even, like Process. my therapist was like, well, it is. So we just have to mentally get you on it is. Like we don't need you to like pro process because you're, you're on a deadline here. Like <laughs> just keep telling you like, affirming yourself just like okay is. let's say it's not happening just don't write just, you yeah. have to write you gotta write but like in my brain I was like I can't even like formulate the thoughts and I'm still getting there and I don't even know if I'll like fully like actualize it until it the day that it arrives I yeah. don't even know I because at this point still I'm like what the fuck like sometimes I'll just think about it and be like what and yeah. it's just like I don't know like that was like I've never also had my any of my like biggest dreams or goals happen <laughs> yeah. in my life like I not, did not get to didn't get into the college I wanted to go to like it didn't mm. I didn't have like you know the big dream that like came true like yeah. obviously goals have come 
true but like this was one thing that i've been carrying with me since i was like six years old i have no idea like now i'm like what do you do with this well i also feel like in the media you're always seeing people like their dreams come true yeah whether they're like winning the tournament or like they're winning the award yeah they sit and you're just like oh that's not something that happens to me though that's like some crazy thing yeah but for you you also realize that like once it happens this is the thing from my elder years when something (laughs) great happens to you you've always dreamed that when it happens you like become a different person but it's weird because you're the same person you were two seconds before you got the news but now you have it yeah you think that you're supposed to be different now or you're supposed to become this like perfect happy yes fulfilled being yes but you're still you you're just still yourself so you just like evolve with it and then also there's gonna come a point where you're gonna actually not feel fulfilled with it and be like well I have to like be a New York Times bestseller yeah and like I have to do this I have to level up how long is the book the book is so it's currently pretty long like it's really long right now we have to cut it down I'm pretty sure it's gonna end up being 90,000 words which is I want to say just shy of 300 pages oh my god but if I just say right now it's it's 400 but we're cutting holy shit I like to write long because instead of them having to mine for details out of me I would rather them have to take things away so I put everything on on the page they have everything every detail and shit they don't need so then they'll just be able to be like cut 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 but with you I was talking about like once you get it you're gonna want more it sounds like you really love the journey of it all like you love the writing process where some people like maybe just wanted like their name yeah. up there like you actually yeah. enjoy the art of it all yeah and that's why like you can have a long-term sustainable yeah career with I, it. I do love it it's really weird though like my friend pointed this out to me we were talking about like when your hobby becomes something that you're making money for or looking for validation from and then it's no longer a hobby and that was a little heartbreaking for me because she was saying she was like this is my best friend she was like my therapist told me I needed to find a hobby that I was doing for just me that I wasn't looking for validation from and that I wasn't making money from and mm-hmm. I and I like started to spiral I was like well that was writing for me that was poetry and like that was all the things I used to do and now it's like my main job so I'm like okay like this is what I always wanted what the fuck is my hobby now like what literally do do? my therapist was like do something that you would never like post about and yes. I was like but it's like I started sewing but I wanted to sew something funny like I have to poop. And I was like, well, I need to post this. This is hilarious. Like, this and then I was so like, no, I failed already. She, she told me not to do it. <laughs> like, I just like everything is like, I want to post. Like, I'm my therapist will be like, go get your nails done so you're not touching your phone. I'm like, yeah, but then I'm going to be like, look at my nails. <laughs> I'm like, it's also like, also, the, I sat there. It's Sorry. just like the culture. Like, I'm not even showing off. I almost feel like it's something like you just want to tell your friends about. Yeah. And, but ugh, it's hard for me too. Cause I was, I was joke. Like I was the, f- funny one in the group chat or like all my friends were funny so it was that was our thing i think we're all and now funny. i'm getting paid now i'm getting paid because <laughs> be i was funny, funny in the group yeah. chat and you're it but it is a thin line between yeah some comedians like stop laughing in real life <gasps> like like no it, way like some comics you'll say something funny in conversation they go that's funny and I'm like, why don't you laugh? And Wait, they're like, they just look at everything in terms of like, I've is it funny or not? Yeah. Dude, it's like a real thing That's in the comedy scary. community. And it, it's hard to be friends with people like that because you're like, I need a laugh. because I need a laugh from you. I, I'm feeling kind of <laughs> shitty. And you're just yeah, like looking at me with a dead face going, That's, That's funny. funny. And I'm like, I don't believe you. You're like, I don't even know if you're saying that. You yeah. I think it is. But or... I feel like writing is such a like wide range of stuff that like you can still do your poetry and yeah. you can write for fun still. Um, like no one has to see it. I know. No one has to see it. But I do. I I grew up with the like you know 17 magazine and cosmo magazine oh, so good. and i grew up which is so crazy like i loved interviewing people yeah like when i was little i would like go to a restaurant with like a pad and be like why do you want to be a waiter and my mom would be like i'm sorry she thinks she's a journalist and now i'm like interviewing <laughs> no, people on are, tiktok you're also really good at interviewing people <laughs> oh God, i feel stop. like it's a Thank skill set but like when i listen to this podcast or like Anytime that you're doing the street interviews, even like you're just good at it. Like you're sort of you get to the point, you ask a question. I really like I like this. I want to get right to the point. I don't want willy nilly. Yeah, you don't need like anything else in there. Just, yeah, like, tell me. This. And I feel like I do attract like a certain kind of person that like knows that will be open and vulnerable in the right way with me. Yeah. Um, but thank you for that. Okay, now you're throwing me off because you're giving me compliments. <laughs> and I'm not used to it. Wait, so you also have are in a relationship. Yeah. How long have you been together? How did you meet? We've been together for two years. We actually met. Okay, forever. Yes. It's like really like <laughs> my most long-term relationship other than like my ex who I was like on again, off again with for two years. But yeah. we met. It's actually my favorite story ever. His friend and I matched on Hinge like 
right when COVID started, not right when COVID started, it was like June of 2020. We weren't going to meet up, but we were just like chatting on the app. And then we like followed each other on social media. Never met up because like COVID. Yeah. Then like seven, eight months later, it's like February. People are just getting vaxxed. Like restaurants are kind of opening slow, slow roll outdoors. And this guy like saw my TikTok live and then texted me and he was like, hey, like I, I saw your TikTok live and like it just like sparked a memory of you in my brain that like we have connection to one another. Like I have a and then I responded and I was like, oh, so you're going to take me on a date now? And he goes, I actually have a girlfriend. However, I was like, why the fuck are you texting me? Yeah. But I was like, whatever. I was like, well, I mean, OK, that's good for you. And then he was like, but maybe I could set you up with one of my friends. And I was like, OK, OK, we'll see how that goes. Like, maybe. I feel like I've never seen a straight guy do that for someone. <laughs> Yeah. I'm all, you'll be like, do you have any cute friends? Maybe. And they're like, oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, like, let me see him. So he sends me this photo where like, <laughs> like it's like 10 men. And I'm like, all right. And uh, at this point, I kind of want to like just be annoying and be like, yeah, I'll go. I'll give him my phone number. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll go. I'll give him my phone number. And then I canceled twice because like social anxiety is so bad. Hadn't yeah. dated in a while. And <laughs> then I went and it was the kind of thing where I was like, oh, fuck. Like. I'm going to have to cut off all my hoes now. Like, I'm, like, actually going to be in love with this person. And this was a one-on-one -on -one date you guys went on. Yeah, I'm so intuitive. Like, I almost hate how intuitive I am. But I, like, literally sat down at the table and I was like, hmm, yeah, that, that'll that get it. That'll get her. Like, I really, like, and I didn't, like, know for sure. But I had, like, a very strong gut instinct that I was going to have to, like, tell all the other guys that, like, I have been, like, chit-chatting. Was with. he your traditional type? Kind of, yeah. My traditional type is, like, Jewish guys glasses they have to <laughs> they have to be different from me but have an appreciation for like art and mm -hmm. like you know usually a red flag for me is if they're like not gay but did drama club <laughs> <laughs> that's usually a, a green flag that's a green flag that's like a okay go that's good oh like I love a man who is like in footloose like <laughs> great <laughs> And they all were like every man I ever dated was like in college improv comedy uh -huh. like oh loved like loved to watch the greatest showman like <laughs> it's a tight line to walk it is a thin fucking it's a line. thin fucking line <laughs> but I love walking it but it is a niche man wait I love that for you because I always tell people like it's it's really in your gut like you know if yeah. you're texting your friends like do you what does he mean by this i'm like you know no, what he you means know. you know what he I means i always say that too i'm like if somebody is confusing you they're just simply quite simply not the one like somebody yeah. is consistently confusing you why the fuck would that be like your person your go-to like if a friend was confusing you you would be like okay yeah like, like this is annoying and weird and yeah. i don't have time for it yeah we're gonna play a final game. You're okay. crushing it. Honestly, you're so good at talking. Oh um, <laughs> I just never shut the fuck up. I've had a long weekend and I was like, oh, she is gonna, she knows how to take this interview um, by herself. I'll just chat. Time to play the seven deadly sins. Oh, hell yeah. What are you greedy about? Ooh, I think like other people's time, which oh. I feel bad saying. <laughs> And I Wait, don't that's so funny. I don't mean it like in the way that I like need other people's time, but when I love you, like I love you. Like there's no like meter for me. It's either like <laughs> I'm fucking in love with you or like we just don't know each other. And so I feel like I just want to be with my people. Mm -hmm. And like I I can so understand people are busy and like have lives, but like I am so greedy <laughs> with like my friends' time. Like I want to be around them all the time. So I just like want to be with them and like I love them or like my boyfriend or my family. Like I know people have lives outside of like <laughs> me, but I'm like, but they when we're together, we're the main event. Like, yes, let's be together. So I think like other people's time, but I'm getting better at like un like unpacking it, noticing like, OK, like maybe they're busy and they just don't want to see you. It's not like that yeah. big of a deal. And like lives evolve, especially in the city yeah. and the people start getting relationships. They get yeah. dogs. Who knows? Like, yeah, there's so much shit going on. Who were you envious of? And like in the perfect world, I want to be like, nobody. <laughs> but realistically, I think I'm envious of my friends and people who are just like content because I have never felt content in my life. Like I remember in college, I was going through college and I'd be like, if I win this writing award at Michigan, I will think I'm a good writer and I'll be happy. And I would win it and I'd be like, mm, it wasn't enough. If I get this internship, like I'll be content. Like finally, it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And like I've, I'm still like really at like day one of trying to work through that. Like I – literally had my biggest dream of my life come true and I'm like what's next like the yes. minute that I finished my book I was seeking out other projects to start and like I'm grateful for that work ethic and like I'm really excited about the project I did decide to start but it's like I am I can almost never like get to a place of just like calm and yeah. like going through my day and enjoying it without like 
so many other emotions. I understand you. I would say, knock on wood, but like when something really fucking horrible happens to you, <laughs> then like, <laughs> like when your world shatters, then you like, it changes your perspective. Like I know that when I had like a really fucked up relationship and it yeah. kind of changed my perspective to when I woke up, I was like, I just want to not be fucked up. Yeah. And like you get to that point where when enough you you see like how fucked up the world is where you're at one point you're like I'm just like grateful to like yeah. not be depressed today yeah. well that's like my like yeah. dark shit no, I was there you know? in college like my freshman year of college was like the worst year of my life and like my sophomore year too they were just really bad and I remember once I got to the other once I was in it I was like I just want to be able to go to all my classes yes. and I just want to be able to go a day without like being hysterical yes and I just want to be able to go a day without calling my mom crying and like <laughs> Getting there was great, but we're still not there. But. But, like, yeah. So that one, but my brain like almost like chose to forget all of that. Well, that's the she thing. Was like, Bye. so it's like everyone's gone through that shit. So yeah. it's almost like you're you're so, it's almost like you get cocky. Yeah, and then you have to remember go back to that place where all you wanted was to wake up, not have your heart pounding, and like be not okay. Feel sick. So yeah, yeah, so it's almost like I try to get to back to that like bare minimum grateful place. Yeah, when I start getting like, but I'll never have this. I don't have this. I don't have that. Yeah. Okay, stop. You woke up and you were like not depressed. Yeah, today. you're good. Like high fucking five. Yeah. So a lot of it is like playing tricks with yourself. Yeah, you have like to play that. tricks with yourself. I'm pretty good at like being self aware in that way. But sometimes I just like watch some of my friends who are just like chilling through life. Dude, and, like, they're just, well, like, that's a whole nother. They're not thing. mentally unwell at all. And I'm like, I mean, like everybody is to some degree, but they're like pretty mentally well. I'm like, what? It, what does it feel I, like? T- I do get jealous when people like will be like, I had so much fun at dinner last night. And I'm like, just from like a conversation, they're like, it was the best time ever. And I'm like, I need to like be in, a, in front of a crowd of like 10,000 people and like make them all laugh to like feel a little something. To feel joy, <laughs> to feel a tiny spark of joy. I'm like, you're the best I night of your life just, just like having dinner with some yeah. friends. Yeah. And, and like, they, and they mean it. Or like, the, they're like, I went for the greatest walk with my dog yesterday. And I'm like, I, like, no, like I was I, crying I, when I saw <laughs> the sun. And I'm like, no, yes. <laughs> and I, so I want to get to that point. Oh, yeah. Cause like, you know, you're just in your own head and you could appreciate the little yeah. things. So, anyway, it's, it's sad out there. Um, What are you gluttonous about? Ooh, that's a good one. Like, what do you overindulge in besides jars? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm a, I have a huge sweet tooth, but that's obvious. I would say definitely TikTok. Like, I'm trying to get to a place where I don't do it for hours at a time yeah. in a day. And a lot of times I would tell myself it was research and development. Same. It is actually not because I'm- Or you say, like, this is instead of watching TV. Yeah, but then I still watch TV. <laughs> and then also you and I, we're creating unique content. So yeah. I don't necessarily need to be doing like R&D. Like if I spend True. 20 minutes on the app, I'll see all the like hot button things I need to know. But sometimes it'll turn into like an hour when I have an hour off and then three hours at night. And like it is such a vortex. And I actively haven't tried like I'm be so honest, I have not tried to stop, but yeah. I've in the last like honestly few days, I've been like, what if I just like did not open it when I woke up in the morning? It's the first thing I do. Yeah. Cause it can be just so toxic. It's it also depends on like what you're working on. I know that when I have nothing else, like then it's just like pure yes. TikTok. Yeah. So you almost have to like keep yourself busy with other things. Have like different. But also there's no you. creators out here successful who are not like scrolling Watching. nonstop. Yeah. Sometimes they'll say see creators say that they don't watch Absolutely it, not. And I'm like, you're lying. I also think there's some connection between like the time you're on the app and like how well your videos do, but I kind of made that up. I mean honestly, if that was true <laughs> I would like Charlie Punk and Emilio. <laughs> I asked be Alex Earl if that was true. I watch so much of it. Like you could name any niche thing like Scar Girl and I will tell you the whole thing I know about it and I'm like this is crazy. Like I watch also like random people like get engaged. Like I know way too much about people. I also feel like I feel like me and you are on the same algorithm and I feel like they should do more like like friend get togethers or something based on all the data they're doing of like the algorithm. Yeah. Like I feel like I'll post a video about like laughing loudly or something and everyone's like, oh, I found my, t-. and it's like, I really found my people. Yeah. Like I'll have like 800,000 like women that I'm like, I think we should start a cult. Yeah. Like, like we're go, here. Like, we we're found here. Let's go, girls. It's like there should be algorithm types and yes. you should be, and everyone should be like personality into type. And they should tell you Gryffindor. And then, yeah. And then you're like, okay, this is my algorithm type. Like now we can all just like, Literally. 
literally sad together because they have crazy fucking data no, and i and wonder like what people you're like closest with in the world and you might as well just become best friends with them yeah like why not i hate when i try to explain something to somebody and i'm like do you see this thing on tiktok it's like really fucking crazy and they're like i i have no clue what Paige and i recently realized that like we're a little off on our tiktok algorithm which is fun for giggly squad because we talk about different yeah. things but i'm like you haven't seen Instagram. How has she not seen Scar Girl? Because that's every video is an explanation of her on mine. I know. I was I just know. watching her like earlier. Like she was. <laughs> I'm like, I'm currently getting updates right now. Yeah. When was the last time you were a sloth? So like lazy, didn't do anything all day. Saturday. I hate, I really hate it. Like I have trouble like just not doing things mm -hmm. and I associate like Whenever I even have fun, I'm like associating guilt with it, which is so sad. I'll be like, fuck, I really need to go punish myself because I like I smiled. Um, but on Saturday, I woke up with the worst UTI ever, like to the point where I was like, oh, my God, like I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And so I like called in a prescription to the pharmacy with like some fucking app that I found on my phone. I was like, hey, then I woke up my boyfriend at like nine after being in agony for hours and I was like you gotta go I can't even stand like go to the pharmacy go and he was like can I just like get a prescription for you and I was like well just tell them I can't walk like go and it was so bad and I like I don't want to say I was stuck at his apartment I love his apartment but I couldn't get back to mine because I was like ill and I had nothing I like came after a night out from the night before so I didn't have like my things mm -hmm. like my books and my blankets and like my laptop all I had was like his tv and like the clothes and his fucking netflix and yeah and his clothes and like his netflix and, I, and he was doing such a good job taking care of me but I was like <laughs> sitting I was just like sitting all day uh, UTI is like your body telling you something they are so bad. And I have talked to so many women in the last 72 hours about this that are like, oh, I've never had one. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? No, Paige right has them all the time. I had it. I have had one once and it was the worst it's experience so in my life. bad. Because it's like not painful, but it's like there's a uncomfortableness is almost worse than painful. Oh, I'll almost yeah. take pain. No, I would rather pain. I can take an Advil. <laughs> this like nothing was working. No. And then my friend gave me these pills yesterday and she's like, take two every time you have sex. And I was like this is what my reality is going to be? Yeah. She was like, yeah, then you won't get them. And I'm like, no, but why do you Like, what did women do yeah, back in the day? Get men some supplements. Like, why do I need to be taking, like, <laughs> popping pills? Like, yeah. Can you imagine if you were single and you have one in you're like, hey, sorry. Like, you just crush them up first. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're just try to make them. it fun. Like, the guy's like, what? Like, <laughs> I actually want to read again because I, like, haven't read in, like, 40 years. Do you have any advice for, like, when to read during the day? Sometimes I feel like reading is, like... I don't want to say a waste of time, but like, you know, the day's like, oh, ba, 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 And then you're like, do I read? And yeah. you almost feel like you're just like. No, I feel that. I think a really good way to start is just like telling yourself that you're going to read one chapter at night. Oh. And a lot of times I make my boyfriend do this too. We'll do it before we watch TV. So like we're watching um, How to Get Away with Murder right now, which I'm so late to that, but whatever. Yeah. But before we get to watch like the episode, I'll make us read a chapter because if you go into the TV thing and then you're like, and then before bed, I'll read my chapter. You're not going to do it. No. But if you make it like a carved out time, like this is my one chapter. And sometimes you'll just read a chapter and it'll be done. But other times you'll be like, oh, I like this. Like, I'm gonna skip TV tonight. Like I want more. Yes. Um. So I I do like small increments, like even ten minutes. Like if you. Can't it's smart. Them. I think it's it's just good for your brain in general to do. Yeah. Also, it's like the best way to learn things. I feel like. And you're a writer. Like you write jokes. You write sketches. Like you're always writing content. Like it really helps your writing to read people's wow. writing. Wow. I know. I do. I've always loved writing. Yeah. So I know that like I feel like I'm manifesting a book eventually, but I need to find oh, the right. Oh, it's gonna happen. The right. It's gonna be so way funny. about it. Oh my god. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um. When was the last time you let your pride or your ego get in the way of something? Because you are interesting. You have a thin line between you're like, I'm literally so good at writing, but you're also like not egotistical about it. Yeah, I honestly, I think I'm I'm really hard on myself, which is something I've worked through in like a lot of therapy. So I don't really let it get in the way of like my career wise stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I don't ever be like, I'm the shit. Like I'm usually like, I suck like <laughs> so bad. But I think my pride and ego will get in the way of like arguments with like loved ones. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, my boyfriend and I really don't argue, but if it's like any tough com conversation or I'm wrong when I was like dead ass, I'm right. <laughs> like I will feel like so ego bruised. And yeah. I feel like that happens with my parents too a lot. Like I love them and we are so like, we communicate in a really healthy way. But I think like 
when I get into arguments with people, I kind of think my snap thing is like I get prideful yes. or I can get egotistical like when I'm in like a hot moment with someone. Yes. But never really about like career stuff, but definitely in like personal relationships and like arguments. Mm. She's a debater. Um, no, my dad's <laughs> a lawyer and he's always like, what if you were a lawyer? You'd be a great lawyer. I'm like, why? Because I like to yell at people. I would be a fucking terrible lawyer. You put me under pressure. I'm sobbing. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, you just like, like to talk. When like, I get frustrated, I just start being like, well, this is fucking stupid. Yeah, no, I can never do it. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> you just walk out of the room. They're like, okay. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you lusted over someone? So besides your boy toy, do you have a celebrity crush? It's a good one. Okay. I like, this is too, I think recently, like in like a loving women lusting sort of way, Miley Cyrus, like the whole new era. Like I know, I know it's all like actually bullshit and she hasn't confirmed any of it to be true. But do you think it's all made up? Kind of. Because it came like quickly. I was like, how did they get the information so quick? I think not one of them has a source. Interesting. And I'm Very like, journalistic of you. Where's your fucking source for this? Like, who told you this? They're just like, that's the house. And like, maybe they did the research, but like, show me Zillow. But first, the house show was supposed Zillow. to be like a rented house that he rented. Yeah. And then it was her house. I know. I'm like, show me the Zillow. Show me the show me the receipts. They can't. But regardless, like, I just thought she looks so hot and she's perfect. I yeah. love her. So definitely her. I would say like, I'm not a big celebrity crush girl, but I do love the guy in Pitch Perfect. <laughs> that is so on brand for you. <laughs> and I went to the Tonys last year, like for content with CBS. And oh my God, he was cool. there. And I was like, he's like literally my hall pass in every relationship I've ever had. I was like, I'm going to talk to him. He like did not want to talk to me. <laughs> he was like, definitely just like, he was so polite. But I was like, I am such a big fan. Like I was so like, I was drunk. I was yes. also, like, it was this long night. It was like midnight. And he was like, well, I'm proud of you for trying because I don't get the balls. I'm I'm like kind of New York in those situations where it yeah. could be like my literal favorite person. I will ever, never, yeah. I will pretend like I don't yeah. know who they are and then never talk to them ever. My best friend was in an elevator with Beyonce, just the two of them, and she didn't say anything. That's what I would have done. Yeah, she didn't say anything. That's and what I would have done. To this day, we're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but, then, but then also, the second you do say something, you always regret it. And then if it comes out your mouth and then the elevator, I can't imagine how awkward that would be. Like the elevator doors are opening. You're like, Beyonce. What do you say to Beyonce? Like, no, like, hey, are you Beyonce? Like, there's no way. I'd be like, yo, are you triggered by elevators? (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, I I always find myself like talking to people that I like. I'm like, okay, I need to talk to this famous person. I met Tina Fey. And that was it. And she was like, okay. or like you'll think of the most like fucked up in- inappropriate story that like you think is gonna hit and it like yeah. never hits. <laughs> Gina Faye's like looking at you like never even look in my direction in your life. <laughs> we always joke that. Yeah, Meryl Streep's daughter went to my school. No way. She when I went to poly prep for like two years back Love in the it. day, and we were like good friends. Friends, we were besties. We were, <laughs> we were you, best fucking Hayley friends. Bieber and Me, Haley Bieber, and Meryl Streep's daughter, Louisa. <laughs> And Meryl Streep was, like, at one of the events, and my grandma, like, loved her. And, like, my nan is hilarious, but she was, like, I had breast cancer, and then I broke my hip. And I'm, like, why are we telling Meryl Streep really story? I feel like so many people tell celebrities, like, their really full life weird stories. things and, like, sob stories. And, like, when this person died in yes. my life, like, you brought me solace. And I'm, yes. like, I'm sure they get it a lot, but they're probably thinking to themselves, like, why are you telling me this? It, it also, like, it you know like you probably get recognized and stuff yeah. you have to receive all this energy that you're not always prepared to receive yeah and then if you are able to match it it's even weirder if you don't match it it's awkward it's There's super never awkward someone's pouring their heart out to you and you're like in line at the whole foods <laughs> and you're like whoa like i literally don't know what's going on and then on. they feel bad after honestly fame is f- a fucked up thing yeah like uh, don't be <laughs> oh my god if beyonce was in the elevator i'd just be like you're awesome. But then I'd be like, there's nothing you there's can you say. You can't say anything. You can't be like, hi, Beyonce. That's weird. You can't say, are you Beyonce? That is horrible. You can't say like, love your work. Because like, that doesn't do it justice. Like, yeah, I love you. That's also <laughs> That's creepy as shit. Weird. There's actually no solution. Maybe what she did was correct. But like, also the missed opportunity of a lifetime but I guess it's kind of cool to just feel like I was in an elevator with her. You Like, your dream thing is for you to say something and Beyonce to be like, you're cool as shit. Like, yeah. do you want to hang out? Yeah, and like, that never would have happened. I think it's good to go in with just like, can I take a selfie with you? I might have just done that. Like, yeah. I might have just been like, I know who you are. I clearly love you. I'm not trying to bother you. Can I take a selfie with yeah. you? Like, let's cut the BS. I don't mind like a quick selfie moment. I know Either. some celebs, though, are like, 
like I know Louis C.K. doesn't take self- selfies with people. Okay. Certain people don't take selfies because yeah. it like takes from their soul. I don't fucking know. And I look That's- like fucked up shit in half of the selfies, but I I love it. It's like yeah. a moment. It's fun. It's it's like today's signature yeah. kind of thing. It's fun. And like I'm I'm pretty flex with that as well. Unless yeah. I'm like the only time I would say like please don't talk to me is if I'm like look like I'm having a serious conversation <laughs> with someone. Like, have you ever been interrupted by someone when you're like really like, or Full, yeah. back when I was dating, like I'd be on a date and oh, somebody yeah. would be like, hey. And I'm if like, you're like eating, it's like kind of weird. Oh yeah, you're sitting at a table <laughs> like, and like shoving. walk up. <laughs> I just have all these moments because I'm like, I'm a, I'm weird. Like I'll be like picking my nose. I'll be like standing outside of a Taco Bell. Like, just like, yeah. should I eat Taco Bell? And people catch me in these weird moments. Like oh, I'm yeah. not, I'm not just like that cool girl walking. I am no, always doing something no, fucking I'm weird. I'm always, they're always catching me in the wild. Like, <laughs> Six bags. Catch bags. in the wild. Yeah, I'm like, I look like so fucking weird right now. There's always <laughs> something weird happening. And these people also, this is what they say to me all the time, which I don't know if this is a compliment or not. And it like really kills me. I always get, you're so pretty in person. And I'm like, guys, guys, this is so not it. Like, I think they think they're like, oh my God, you're really pretty in person. But like, they're always shocked. <laughs> Actually, that's like, guys, yeah, that's the, that's one of those that you're I like. I get them Rrr. all the time, or I'll get a DM being like, "It was so nice to meet you." Like when you were like schlepping nine bags down like <laughs> Fifth Avenue today, looking like literally horrible. Like, or summer. like I've gotten the like, "You're so pretty in person." Where like I think it's because they assume that everyone looks like better online. So when they yes. meet you and you look the same, I think that's what they're going for. <laughs> yeah. Or just like you look really pretty like in person, like whatever it is. But it no matter what, it comes off like you are a troll. (laughs) Also, I'll have some interactions with people who listen to my pod or whatever. And I'll be like, wow, wow, that was like cool. And I try to remember it to be like, this is how you should act when you see someone who's famous. And I always fuck it up. Like, I don't remember. I don't know what to do. No, I had a cool interaction in like the Ralph's coffee. This girl was like, (laughs) so So nice you're like should we be friends i was like wait fuck like she's actually so dope like my friend i was with was like that's the first time that the person was like really chill like it was so cool my ideal thing is like to be in the podcast in like an elevator and someone's like hey i love your podcast like you're you're beyonce yeah i'm basically the beyonce who makes fart jokes i loved lemonade that (laughs) album was so good like but then sometimes if it's too specific you're also like okay you don't need to like breathe i don't fucking know there's no right way to go about it i think it's a vibe i think it's energy i think it's like with friends and men you either fuck with the person or you don't. you don't yeah and you don't know what someone's energy is like some famous people have fucked up energy yeah and some it's so like normal where you're yeah. like oh my god no, you're I've just like, a human i've met like such a range and like there have been famous people that i thought would be so nice and they were so mean and then there are yep. famous people that were i thought would be like so mad literally you're like you could punch me in the face and they're so nice and you're like i would have still liked you if you treated me like shit Shit, yeah and then the the ones that you think are going to be so nice are always the ones who aren't dude i swear to god the people who are like really 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 perfect and nice in the media are monsters Monsters. the ones who like never speak their real mind or have like a little controversy yeah monsters yeah final question okay (laughs) as we got a little sidetracked but it was very important it was important um (laughs) it was focused it was it was controlled chaos yeah what advice would you give to people on how to cope with their hell when you're in your dark time when you're going through it what do you do to get out of it that's a good one I think I always like to remind myself when this like really changed my life when I was like experiencing my first real heartbreak that like love and heartbreak and like hurt and happiness they're inverses of one another so we can only feel one of them because we feel the other one so it's like not even possible to be depressed without understanding the feeling that is joy it's not even possible to be joyful without understanding the feeling that is depressed and I stopped like resenting my hell then like I stopped like hating it and I was more like what if I gave it space to like be hell because I know that the joy and like the heaven side of the other the other side of it will be much louder and brighter and will end up taking over from this so I always like mentally do that and then like physically I feel like you just have to have your coping mechanisms and like I have so many but like therapy is one of mine I love to like whenever I'm having like a panicked moment if I can get outside like I just know that those things like are gonna bring me like maybe a bit more joyous in that moment but I do really try to remember that like every emotion you're experiencing has the other side to it and we wouldn't be even able to understand the emotions if we didn't feel both that's so cool. The duality. The duality. I love it so much. She's an inner duality ever. <laughs> My duality ever for sure. In your creative writing, do you feel like you're more creative in a certain mood 
or like mm. vibe. Yeah, I think if I'm like so happy and elated and excited about something, I wouldn't write something very good because I would just like not be focused. Whenever I'm like really sad or trying to work through something, I'll write it down in my notes. So actually the biggest blessing of the book that like came from the book was that I wrote down every like emotion I was feeling throughout like the last like whenever I notes started and I was able to parse through like all these notes and like put them into one document and it's like some of them are just like fragments of the way I felt some of them are like 10 line poems some of them are like a little journal entry some of them are like writing down something that happened that I didn't want to forget and that usually happens from pain but I was like in a pretty good mental spot when I was writing and I feel like having all of that I was like oh my god I'm so grateful to my past self she didn't even know that she was going to need this stuff I didn't know I needed this but <laughs> ah. <laughs> but yeah I, I think like when I'm when I'm not doing my best is probably when I'm more creative I feel like a lot of people are like that yeah I also think because com comedy you think of like okay what am I annoyed at what's frustrating me what am I mad at and like the yeah. best comedy comes from that oh, yeah I also think someone told me once that this is what I do to try to control the future which is anxiety and an anxious thing to do but I when there was something bad happens I always go okay something good has to happen after this yeah. like it's like a basketball yeah. but then when something good happens I go oh no something bad's gonna happen yeah. after this I said to my therapist I'm like something has to go wrong now <laughs> she's like why are you thinking like that like that is not the way the world works well I used it. to think very black and white and my therapist helped me be like you're so black and white with shit it's really not yeah. and once I started to look at things like art rather than like sports where it's like yeah. you win you lose you win you lose and it's more like the Bob Ross okay. painting, yeah. as we say, like, oh, singing. the tree is a little slanted. Yeah. It's more beautiful this way. Yeah. So when you look at things like art, it becomes more like, oh, we're having our like blue Picasso moment. Yeah. And it, it's not so black and white of like, you suck or you're yeah. amazing. And now there's like a gray space, which we love. Um, Eli, you were so insightful. I'm so excited. Like, honestly, this is kind of the beginning for you. And I feel like I'm going to look back at this interview and be like, do you remember when I interviewed Eli when she was like doing her first book? And you're so young, but like you're I feel like your head is like on pretty right. And I can't say that for a lot of people on this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm talking about myself. But where can people follow you, watch you, like consume your content? Give me the tea. Yeah. So my Instagram is just Eli dot Rallo. Um, it used to be something else. I was telling Anna before we started, but that's my Insta. My TikTok is at the jar with two R's. Uh -huh. um, pending change. Who knows? But that's what it is right now. Uh -huh. And then I have a podcast called Miss Congeniality. You can listen to it everywhere you listen to podcasts. And then the book is coming out um, fall, winter, 23, 24. And it's called I Didn't Know I Needed This. But if you want any information on it, just like keep up to date on my socials because you'll see it. I'm obsessed. Wait, I forgot to ask you one thing. Are you a part Italian? Yeah. Are you half Italian, half Jewish? Mm hmm Same. No way. I didn't know that about pizza you. Bagel. Yes, pizza bagel! <laughs> people don't know what that is on TikTok. No I said my dad's a pizza bagel once, and people <laughs> are like, oh, what the fuck did you just call him? So my video went viral when I was like, I'm Italian and Jewish. Some people call me a pizza bagel, and other people call me a slut. Yeah. But then people started cutting it and saying, like, I'm this and this, and yeah, people oh, call me, I and it, it went out of control. It was but anyway, <laughs> the, Brooke, um... Mickey-o. Yes, she's a pizza bagel too. Yes, I love it. I think it's so fun because I think that Italians are so like <laughs> crazy hospitable. Like I just think it's the best of both worlds in one person. Like my dad is seriously like the joy of my life and like the light of every room. And like I think it's partially because how he was raised like that. Yes. Um, yeah, we're starting Pizza Bagel Cult. Thanks so much for listening to this episode in hell. And I'm going to put it on YouTube. Check it out on my YouTube and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.